protein powders. It's bloody confusing, isn't it? What protein powder do I need? Do I even need to bother with a protein powder? Well, look, if you're trying to aim for a higher protein diet, protein powders have a spot. They really do. I have had two protein shakes for the best part of 26 years. It has been a fantastic uh, supplement to help me hit my protein targets for the day. And with protein powders, if you blend them up and you put in uh, some high fiber options like some LSA, linseed, sunflower seed, almond mix, black chia seeds, uh, if you put in some, some unsaturated fats, maybe some natural peanut butter, frozen berries, I like to put some passion fruit chunks in there and maybe even some natural honey, it can be a nutritional powerhouse. You can turn a protein shake into something that is not only high protein, but high fiber, as well as having some good fats in there. So protein powder certainly has a place. Probably the, the protein powders that you're gonna come into contact with the most if you're training in the gym, and they're selling protein powders behind the counter, or you're walking into a supplement shop, or you're buying something online, it's probably one, or the big one's gonna be whey protein. Now, whey protein comes from the cheese manufacturing process. It is the liquid byproduct that comes from the cheese manufacturing process. We have WPC, whey protein isolate, and we, or sorry, whey protein concentrate, and we have WPI, which is whey protein isolate. WPC, we'll talk about that first, Again, it's derived from the cheese manufacturing process. It's, it's not as processed as WPI. And because of that, it's not quite as high in protein for its weight. It's about 70 to 80% protein. It tends to have some carbohydrates and some fats in it. Uh, and so because of that, because it has some carbs and some fats, it, it has a creamier taste. And some of the flavor profiles for WPC are really nice. Like you can get some great flavors if something has a high amount of WPC. Uh, generally speaking, if there's a combo protein, so, you know, someone's trying to sell a, a, a blended protein and say that it's got WPI and WPC, WPI, whey protein isolate, is expensive. WPC is cheaper. So what you'll find in that scenario is it will have a larger portion of WPC in the blended shake, and that's a cost-saving measure. WPC complete amino acid profile it is also readily uh, ingested and absorbed so you're able to spike um, your blood levels of amino acids quite quickly get a, a muscle protein synthesis response wpc is fantastic for that um, and again it's a creamier richier taste wpi has further processing done to it from the WPC. So it's refined further. And because of that, it is lower in carbohydrates and it is also lower in fats. It has only a small amount. It's about 90% protein for its weight. WPI is very, very rapidly absorbed. It mixes really well in your shaker. Um, it's absorbed very quickly. It's digested very quickly. It's absorbed very quickly. It spikes muscle protein synthesis. In terms of the, the flavor profile, you might find it a bit more a bit more bland than your WPC, and that's because it doesn't have the carbs and the fats. WPI can be a fantastic uh, protein supplement for somebody who yeah, has some lactose intolerance. A lot of people with lactose intolerance find that they're able to um, take WPI without a problem, and that is because of it is highly refined and the majority of the lactose is removed. So. WPC, uh, PI, WPI, whey protein isolate. It's kind of like the top shelf. It's kind of like extra virgin olive oil. It's the, it's the top shelf protein powder. It's straight in, easily mixed. Maybe the taste is not as good as WPC. Then finally, we have casein protein. Now, casein comes from the cheese manufacturing process as well. It comes from the curds, the solids, and casein is a heavy, it is a slow digesting protein. Uh, for its weight, casein has about, I think it's about 70 to 75% protein. It forms a gel-like substance in the stomach, and so it is digested very, very slowly. So it has a slow release of amino acids, which can be very beneficial if you're looking for something, uh, a protein shake to have before bed. If you have a casein protein shake before bed, it, you drink it, it's going to form a gel in the digestive system, and it's gonna slowly be absorbed and slowly um, be digested over a number of hours. So it's fantastic just before bed. It can also be very helpful during the day. If you know I'm not gonna be eating for you know, a number of hours, I could have a casein shake, and that will help to ensure that I am able to hit my protein targets for the day. And, and also because it's gonna form a gel in the stomach, it might keep me a bit satisfied for a bit longer. So 
Once again, we have whey protein, which includes whey protein concentrate, whey protein isolate. Just think these are readily absorbed. Um, they, they mix pretty well, they taste good. And then we have casein. Casein, it's a slower digesting protein. It's a heavier one. Uh, you might find that it's a, um, a bit chalky maybe sometimes when you drink it. It's definitely, it definitely takes a bit more mixing, but they are the most common types of protein powders that you'll find out there. Now, the thing is this, a lot of people will tell you that a protein powder taking it is second rate to food could not be further from the truth. I'm not saying go and have 10 protein shakes a day, but certainly in, in your diet, you have room for one or two protein shakes and don't feel bad about it at all. Like I said, if you mix it with some high fiber options and you have some, some uh, berries and fruit and honey and peanut butter, and you can make it a nutritional powerhouse. So there you go, the different types of protein powder that you're commonly gonna find out there, whey protein, casein, come from milk and the cheese manufacturing process. If you like this video, if you find it helpful, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon.